in this module we shall discuss about theory of optimal taxation excess burden of taxes theory of measurement of deadweight losses an appropriate tax system and its design in public finance are of major concern many attempts have been since ages made to get the optimal tax policy but have been a complete failure in the practical tax design because they often ignore the range of considerations reflecting fiscal and societal institutions which are very essential both in normative as well as positive analysis of taxation in general the standard optimal taxation procedure usually ignores the equity and efficiency relationship as taxes are always collected at a cost both to the government and the taxpayers and similarly this collection is enforced again at a cost to both the parties in the following module i have made an attempt to take into consideration all the relevant institutional features which can be incorporated into the general framework in its most general form the suggested framework will enhance the readers understanding of optimal tax policy in several ways it will help one to quantify with a common barometer through which various trade offs that taxes create after starting this module you would be able to know the indian tax system and its role in public finance learn the theory of optimal taxation analyze the factors affecting the optimal tax structure in an economy know the meaning of excess burden of taxation evaluate the factors which create excess burden of taxation understand the meaning of horizontal equity and vertical equity learn the methods to calculate the excess burden of taxes know the meaning of deadweight loss analyze the relationship between excess burden and deadweight loss learn the method to calculate deadweight loss analyze the causes of deadweight loss first we shall discuss the theory of optimal taxation optimal tax theory is the detailed study of designing and its implantation of such a tax structure which can reduce inefficiencies and distortions in the market under the existing given economic market conditions this standard approach of optimal taxation is primarily based on some methodological assumptions example a specific amount must be raised by the government in the form of revenues this revenue is in turn dependent on the type of tax instruments available with the government namely only commodity taxes only income taxes or both of them are used the objectives of the government must be in coordination with the individual as well as firms optimization it should be for the social welfare a neutral tax is the one which avoids distortions and inefficiencies completely against the general notion of economist arguing that taxes generally distort behavior a lot in the economic system depends on the type of tax system prevalent next optimal commodity taxes the objective of commodity tax rates on efficiency ground is to achieve equal proportional reductions in the demands for all commodities which gives lower tax rates for more elastic demands of the goods while on the equity grounds the goods which have higher consumption by the lower income groups must be taxed low ramsey was the first to give his contribution to the set theory of optimal taxation followed by many new ones by others this problem is therefore also termed as ramsey problem his prime objective under this approach is to adjust consumption tax rates under specified constraints so that least utility can be reduced he proposed a solution to reduce excess burden of consumption taxes stating consumption tax on each good should be proportional to the sum of the reciprocals of its supply and demand elasticities later many new economists gave an alternative to ramsey's proposition by propounding tax systems which take many tax structures simultaneously to define their theories next optimal income taxes 
when we talk of equity it is said income tax should be more for those who earn more and lower for those who earn less even in certain cases income tax is levied to equalize after tax incomes and therefore implying marginal tax rates to be 100% though on another ground that of efficiency lower marginal tax rate brings more responsiveness in individuals in their labor decisions this is to say the smaller the spread in the skills of the individuals the less concerned they are with the equality in society and lower would be the amount of revenue that government must collect we can even say that the marginal tax rate on the single richest individual should be zero next is optimal tax mix when we talk on efficiency grounds a lump sum income tax is required for an optimal tax mix while commodity taxes are not used on the other hand on equity grounds both the commodity as well as income taxes is used though in certain circumstances the optimal form of commodity tax rates is made uniform under optimal income tax so that the taxation of commodities at different rates is not optimal and only optimal income tax is used commodities have more in elastic demands should be taxed highly to bring a reduction in the access burden of taxation but if these goods are majorly consumed by lower income groups then equity grounds of taxation demands lower tax rates next we shall discuss the role of equity in optimal tax structure while discussing the optimal tax structure role of equity is important equity can be classified in the following two criteria first horizontal equity horizontal equity principle says that the people earning the same irrespective of their position or status must pay the same for example mr b junior executive of x company is paying tax 5000 that is 10% on his salary of say 50000 then the clerk of some other company who is also earning the same 50000 bucks must pay 5000 bucks as tax as his ability to pay is the same even though his position is a bit lower in the company second vertical equity vertical equity says that the payment of taxes should be dependent on the level of income earned that is the ability to pay in other words different people with different ability to pay must pay differently for example mr anudeep earns 50000 bucks and pays 5000 at 10% on his salary as tax and then mr bhanudeep who is earning 5000 bucks must pay 500 bucks as tax at same 10% on his salary next moving on to the access burden of taxes access burden distortion cost dead weight loss of taxation is all synonyms terms used in economics access burden is the most used in terminology amongst them propounded by adam smith it refers to the economic losses suffered by the society due to the prevalent tax rates and subsidies by the government economic theory state that distortions in the taxes change the economic behavior and its consequences on the free market and its functioning they make the behavior different from the one which would be without taxes there are two methods to calculate the access burden first average cost of funds approach the average cost of funds is the division of total cost of distortions by the total revenue collected by the government second marginal cost of funds approach the marginal cost of funds is the difference in the distortion by a unit increase in revenue of the government in other words it is the size of the distortion that is caused by the last additional unit of revenue of the government a similar distortion can be caused by subsidies also subsidies are generally taxes with negative rates next we shall discuss the types of distortions any tax measure in all the cases do distort and distract the economic behavior then that would have been in its absence similarly progressive taxes also distort the economic behavior though the discretionary effects of a particular type of a tax may be substituted by other benefits too 
say for example the redistribution of tax amount collected from the higher income groups to the lower income groups who could possibly get more benefit from them. Distortion can be of two types. First, general distortion. Second, deliberate distortion. Now we will discuss about general distortion. Every type of tax do affect the economic behavior in general. For example, sales tax on goods sold do have a direct effect on the demand. That is, an increase in the tax rate will bring a decrease in the demand of that product by some percent and vice versa. Similarly, income tax will tend to discourage people from earning more or towards the illegal practice of undeclared income. To overcome this tax, one may get involved in black money trading or even get distracted from work and hence leading to another economic problem of unemployment. Next is deliberate distortion. Deliberate distortion is often created by government with a positive approach to diminishing the negative effects created by general distortion. So not all distortions are bad. Example, sin taxes are levied on products that incur extra cost to the society like alcohol, tobacco and pollution etc. These type of taxes are also termed as Pygovian taxes. Let us now discuss about dead weight loss. The net economic losses or the reductions in the government revenues from an inefficient allocation of resources are termed as dead weight loss. It is a common problem faced by any type of economy. It is also known as allocative inefficiency. The common causes of dead weight loss can be monopoly in pricing by government due to taxes and subsidies, due to price ceilings or floors on commodities and wages, special policies of government, etc. Let us discuss the causes of dead weight loss in detail. First, price ceilings. Price ceiling is the maximum limit set by the government for the commodity and service prices, above which any dealer could not charge from the general public. For example, government usually set a ceiling on the rent as a rent control measure. Second, price floors. Price floors is the minimum limit set by the government for the commodity and service prices, below which any dealer, seller should not charge so as to avoid inefficiency in distribution. For example, this type of control is usually set on labor force, hourly wages to safeguard the interest of labor. Third, taxes. Taxes are the government charges which they charge to render the services. For example, sales tax, commodity tax, income tax, etc. Next, we will learn how to calculate dead weight loss. Step 1. Analyze the four basic parameters namely, first, P1 that is the original price of the commodity being valued. Second, P2 that is the new price of the commodity post imposition of price ceiling, price floor or taxes. Third, Q1 that is the original quantity demanded of the commodity being valued. Fourth, Q2 that is the new quantity demanded of the commodity post imposition of price ceiling, price floor or taxes. Step 2. Calculate through formula dead weight loss as follows. Dead weight loss is equal to 0.5 into P2 minus P1 into Q1 minus Q2. For example, the government has imposed a tax on coffee. Arun paid rupees 4 before tax for a cup of coffee but now he pays rupees 5 for the same. This increase in price has reduced Arun's consumption of coffee from 5 coffees a day to 3 coffees per day. Now to determine the dead weight loss. Dead weight loss is equal to 0.5 into P2 minus P1 into Q1 minus Q2 which is equal to 0.5 into 5 minus 4 into 5 minus 3 which is equal to 0.5 into 1 into 2. So now the dead weight loss is equal to rupees 1. So from the above example we can see that an increase in the price of a commodity due to a change in the government taxes can lead to a certain dead weight loss. Let us now summarize what we have learned in this module. 
to conclude this module talks about the tax structure in india and about some important terms used to describe the same it also states the optimal structure and its role in designing the appropriate tax system it describes the importance of equity and efficiency and the relationship in designing the optimal structure it describes optimal structure as a tax structure designed in such a form that it reduces the distortions and inefficiencies in the economic system the two common instruments in the governmental hands are commodity taxes and income taxes which it uses to raise the revenue from the general public a neutral tax is described as a one which removes the inefficiencies and distortions completely from the economy equity and efficiency are two important parameters on which any tax structure is evaluated optimal commodity tax and optimal tax mix are three instruments to maintain the relationship between equity and efficiency equity is further classified on the basis of two criteria horizontal equity and vertical equity the paper also highlights the meaning of access burden and its consequences on the economy access burden of taxation refers to the economic losses suffered by the society due to the prevalent tax rates and subsidies by the government the two methods to calculate access burden are average cost of funds approach and marginal cost of funds approach then it states different types of distortions namely general distortion and deliberate distortion and lastly it states the meaning of dead weight loss and the causes which give place to such losses the net economic losses or the reduction in the governmental revenues from an inefficient allocation of resources are termed as dead weight loss it is a common problem faced by any type of economy the major causes being price ceilings by government set price floors and taxes a method to calculate dead weight loss in an year for an economy is calculated by a standard formula which is also stated in the paper in detail